Hey there Bleepin' Jeepers, it's Tyler. This week I'm working on the Scorpion Crawler project. You might ask how? Stay tuned and I'll show you what I mean. Now Matt contacted me a little while ago, and if you remember in his video how he fabricated a console for the Scorpion Crawler, he asked if I would make him a console cover slash armrest that would match the new uh, Recaro seats that he's got. So this week I'm going to show you how I fabricated this console cover from scratch. You guys have been asking for upholstery videos. This is a really good beginner's project. Uh, it's going to teach you some some good techniques that you're going to need for more complicated things. So this is a good place to start. So I always like to begin my projects by drawing them out. This gives me a good visual idea of what I'm doing. It uh, also helps me keep track of my finished measurements. And so that's what I'm giving, or what I'm writing down right here, the measurements that Matt gave me. So I'm going to begin by cutting a piece of plywood here, this half inch plywood. I clamp, uh, I like to clamp a guide so that I can get a real nice straight cut. And now I'm going to go in and clean up all of the edges. I don't want any sharp little slivers that, that may accidentally poke through the vinyl and ruin my cover when I go to put the cover on. Now I'm also setting up my router here. I'm going to cut a groove around the inside of that piece of plywood and that groove is going to create a space or a recess where I can staple the fabric down in and that will make it sit flatter on the console that Matt built. You don't have to do this but it just makes for a cleaner more professional look and this is the scorpion crawler project so there's no way I'm going to screw around. I want this to look good. You can see I'm using a board clamp to it as a guide. Now I'm going to cut my foam. So I lay my board on the foam. I'm using a, a closed cell foam for this. It's a really dense foam. And I am cutting the foam about 3 16ths of an inch bigger than my board. You always cut your foam bigger than your board. When it's this dense, you don't need to buy much, but you do need it a little bit bigger. Now I'm cutting the foam out on my bandsaw. Normally I glue the board to the foam first, but where this is so high density, I went ahead and cut it on the bandsaw because I knew it would be pretty dimensionally stable. Now I'm going to put some glue on both sides here, let it tack up, and stick that board down so it won't move around. That's really going to make it easier to install the cover if that board stays put. And once I've got this glued, I want to start shaping the ends. I'm going to round them off so that they're, they look nice and professional and are comfortable because this is going to be an armrest as well. I'm just using a sanding wheel in my die grinder here and you can shape this closed cell high density foam as if it was wood. In fact here I am with a sanding block just doing my finishing here. Now I'll go to the other side and shape it. Once I'm happy with that, I went ahead and painted the baseboard. And once the baseboard was dry, now I'm going to coat the entire uh, project here with a quarter inch open cell foam. This is going to hide any imperfections that may be in the closed cell foam and it's going to give me kind of a nice clean slate and give it also a nice soft feel when you initially touch the armrest and then as you compress this quarter inch cell foam or this quarter inch foam then you'll get into the stiffer closed cell foam and it, and it just gives the console a real nice comfortable feel for you to rest your arm on it. And you can see I was kind of careful as I was gluing that not to put any wrinkles in the corners. And this foam stretches really nice, gives you a really nice finished product. I'm going to trim the excess off here. And now we can start building the cover. So here I'm starting to lay out my pattern. Now I need to cut this three quarters of an inch wider than I want it to, than my finished dimension. 
because I'm adding a 3 8 inch seam allowance on each side. So there's going to be one long center panel that I'm cutting here and I'm cutting it exactly three quarters of an inch wider than I want it to end up being when I'm done sewing it. Now I'm going to square up the ends Just double check my measurement there to make sure I've got it the right length. I'm leaving plenty of, of length. Now I'm going to start working on the side panels. Now I trace this initially just to give me an idea of how big the side panel needs to be. And now I'm going to start cleaning it up and making it symmetrical. The key in upholstery really is symmetry. The difference between a mediocre job and a very professionally looking job is taking the time to make things symmetrical and to make things exact. And now, if you look closely as I'm cutting this out, I'm adding my 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, you can see it there, as I'm cutting. If you're not comfortable just cutting it like this, then use a ruler and draw your seam allowance. I've done this for many, many years. I'm and I'm just comfortable doing it this way. Now I'm going to use that pattern to create the pattern for the opposite side. And this way I keep everything perfectly sym symmetrical and I know that the cover is going to going to fit well. Now I'm just going to do a quick test fit before I start sewing to make sure things are going to work and then you can see me here making these index marks that's so I know where to start sewing. Let's get started sewing this cover together. You always put your fabric face to face, or finished side to finished side. Now this is a pretty tight little radius here, so I'm gonna work around it slowly. And now you'll see why I needed that 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Sometimes when you're going around a corner like this, it's helpful if you'll stop and raise the foot on the sewing machine and take the pressure off so that you can line up the fabric. You see me doing it there. What you need to do is make sure your needle is in the fabric before you raise the foot of the sewing machine or the two pieces will separate and you'll be able to get them back together. So here I'm doing a quick test fit. Matt's seats have what's called a French seam, which means there's a, a seam sewn on both sides of the one that I just sewed. Now is the time to make sure this cover fits. If there's anything that needs to be adjusted, I need to do it now, because once I start that French seam, I'm committed. Because once you poke a hole in the vinyl, it's there forever. So now, happy with the way that fits, I'll start working on this French seam. It's really tough to explain to you how to do one of these without it being a specific French seam tutorial, but basically I'm sewing a seam, that, uh, a line of stitching that you can see on either side of the seam that I just sewed. You can kind of get an idea there. I'm being really careful to pull one seam allowance to one side and stitch it down and then pull the other seam allowance to the opposite side and stitch it down. You can kind of see there you end up basically with three row lines of stitching. All right, I'm gonna hurry and burn through the other side now. Now because that radius is so tight, it kind of creates some puckers. So here I'm gonna trim those off just in, the, just in the corners. And that will allow the cover to fit nice and flat and not have a bunch of little bulges and puckers under it, especially with that dense foam. It's just gonna make for a, a much nicer finished product. And once I get done with that, we're done with the sewing part and we can work on actually installing the cover. I like to use stainless steel staples. They're a lot more expensive but they last longer, they're stronger, so I prefer to use them. Here I'm going to Put the cover on. I'm going to make sure all my seams line up, that everything fits well, and then I'm going to put one staple in all four sides. As I'm doing that, if you'll watch closely here, I'm folding the material underneath itself and then tucking it down in that groove that I cut with the router. 
That way I don't end up with any raw edges. It just gives you a much more professional and cosmetic appearance. And it's going to make it lay nice and flat. So I'll work my way around and each time I go to punch a staple in I'm checking to see that my seam is lined up. If I pull one of the staples too tight it'll pull that seam down and you'll be able to see it from the top side very obviously and it'll look really bad. So I'm being careful to make sure that seam stays nice and square with the foam and once I've got the four sides stapled down I'll go to work on the corners. Now in the corners, pull them in tight like this, put two staples on each side of this little dart right here, and then that will hold the corner stable while you make these relief cuts. This is, you want to remove a little bit of the material in here so you don't have such a big gob in the corner that will then hold the console up and create a gap that you were trying to eliminate when you did all that routering. So I've cut those two little wedges out. Now I'll fold the raw edges underneath so that I've got a nice clean look. And then once I've got that where I want it, I'll go ahead and put several staples up that dart. And that'll hold it nice and flat. couple more down into the groove and then I'll go ahead and do this on the other three corners. Be slow and methodical with this. It takes a little bit of practice but it's worth it when you get a good finished product. So that's a good beginner's upholstery project for you guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll like, share, and subscribe. That helps us to keep the videos coming. And go check out Matt's site, bleepinjeep.com. I hope Matt likes this armrest cover. And I'll see you guys next time.